What's going on guys, Victor here. Got my good buddy, Captain Johnny back there. What's up guys? Captain Johnny's a good friend of mine, but he's also a charter captain. You guys have seen us catch clown knifefish together, peacock bass, sunshine bass. He's a guy out on Lake Ida. I'm gonna have his stuff linked below. He also has his own channel, which I'm gonna have linked below. But today we're out in the ocean, in the home waters. We got Hillsborough Inlet right there behind me. And today's video is all about the Barracuda. Haven't done a Barracuda catch clean cook in a long time. They're a great fish. They taste great despite what people say. So we're gonna catch them, we're gonna clean them, and we're gonna cook them. But first, we gotta get bait. There it is. There it is, on the bucktail. That's uh, a little, no. uh, it's an Almaco Jack, but you know what? These make great bait. These are unregulated. Big Barracuda's gonna smoke this guy in a little bit. Johnny's just driving around this big old can right here. And um, I'm tossing a little Mustad Bucktail jig. Great thing to catch bait with. So I just cast it as close as I can to the buoy. I let it sink, cause we're in what, 30, 40 feet of water. So a lot of times those baits will be down deep. There's something. That's a blue runner right there. We got ripping current, so it's kind of hard to work the sabiki and the, uh, the jig, but I just dropped down a sabiki. Hopefully got a blue runner on. Nice. There's the bait. Big barracuda is gonna smoke this. Look at that, that's a petite blue runner oh, right there. Beautiful. Adam would be very proud of that one. <laughs> got a sequence of hooks. It looks like a little fly. I don't know what blue runners think it is. Plankton or something. We got, uh, I don't know, like four or five baits. Got a mixture of Almaco Jacks, Blue Runners. Oh yeah, baby. We're gonna go try and sabiki some smaller baits right now at Boca Inlet, but we wanted to have some big backup baits. Try to get on some monster kudas and some fun size ones. We're headed about four miles that way. Catch you guys at Boca Inlet. All right guys, me and Johnny are at the inlet. Oh. And what do you know? Oh, you lost him, Johnny. Lost him. Well, we're loading up on some pilchards and sardines. It's a waste too heavy. Right here in front of the inlet. Yeah, they're falling off. Oh, that's a baby gog. Look at that. Sometimes they just fall right off, but other times you just want to use that little D hooker, and this guy just totally. There we go. We've got quite the variety pack today. This right here, everybody calls a dwarf jack. No such thing. It's a baby blue runner. If you guys enjoy catching bait as much as I do, go ahead and like this video right now. If you haven't already subscribed, it's free, it costs nothing, and then YouTube will let you guys know the next time I upload a video. All right, guys, we got a couple of subscribers right here at the inlet. What's your name? Matt. Jason. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Beautiful petite size filters here, as Adam would say. Even though Adam doesn't follow me on Instagram still. Wow. Well, Adam, he, yo, oh, you got called out right there. The whole world just heard that. Why aren't you following your boy? So yeah, we're probably gonna do this a little bit longer, get like three, four dozen baits and then head on in short. So we're starting out right here. This is, if you guys don't know where we are, this is actually Lake Boca. Kind of funny to see it empty during the weekday, but this is a huge party spot. There's actually a lot of life here. Brooke and I have dove here a bunch of times. There's line fish, there's muttons in here, there's snook, barracuda all sorts of things. There's this huge seawall right here and all along the seawall, it's super shallow and then it drops off and there's like a reef right here. And we're just gonna drift along this wall and usually there's some kudas here. We're gonna start off with circle hook and fluoro and then I'll switch over to wire. To here, I like to hook them right here. And that barracuda is gonna swallow it and hopefully that circle hook gets them in the corner because barracuda have pretty gnarly teeth. smoke Johnny oh yeah see look 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 take it take it take it take it buddy I gotta let him choke it we on Woo! wow it's charging the uh, seawall ripped it out of my hands exactly what we wanted exactly what we wanted so here is kuda number one of the day and this is on the on the uh, floor carbon no wire needed on this guy. So this guy is a little too small to keep. See that circle hook right there perfectly in the corner? A lot of times you'll get cut off, but with these smaller kudas, they don't have as big a teeth. I find that just using a fluorocarbon leader will work and that hook should just pop right out. Just like that. 
So this guy's small. I mean, he would make the slot size. Barracudas actually have a size limit now. Back in the day when I was growing up, they were unregulated. You could kill. Unregulated means 100 pounds or two fish per person, whichever is greater. But now their numbers are down. So there's a slot size on them, 15 to 36 inches. This guy would definitely make it, but we want a little bit bigger for dinner. There's number one of the day. What's up? Thank you. You guys want to be in the video? Yeah. Barracudas. Catch, clean, cook. You know. Yeah. You know I'm not afraid to eat anything. What are you guys doing? Trying to find bait. Trying to catch poacher. Go outside of Boca. Um, outside the jetty. They're lo They're loaded. Uh, it's right. nice. Nice to meet you guys. You too. Thank you. Isn't that awesome? I love meeting you guys. Oh, oh my gosh! What? Did you see that? Holy smokes! Dude, ripped it out of my. We gotta go around this piling. That was so. Oh, oh, that didn't cut me off. That was so sick. Dude, that gave me a heart attack. I saw the heat. I was <laughs> like, oh, free bait. Whoosh. See, stuff like that, man. I, I can't stand when people are gonna be like, you're really fishing for barracuda. Heck yeah, I'm fishing for barracuda. I don't care what I'm fishing for. It's fun. You got a light rod in your hand. They put on a great show and they taste great, which you guys are gonna see later. Yep, Johnny's got one on his bait right there. Yeah, he is. Oh, he's gonna, right, he's gonna, gonna smoke it. Smoke yes. It. Is that on the circle or the wire? On the circle. Oh, he just ate mine uh, too. Yep. Uh huh. Oh, spit it. Sorry, I did not mean to do that. Look at that. That's why people are afraid of barracudas <laughs> right there. Look at that. Imagine that your that's your finger or your leg. I'm on. Dude, he came all the way over here. Are you kidding, dude? He... Oh boy. He's like in that boat. Come on, come out. This is a big fish, Johnny. He's like in the prop of the boat. Ah, oh, shoot, man. Oh, he's around that piling right there. Oh, you see him? Here, if I flip my rod around there, I might be able to get him. I got it. Oh, oh you smoked! Oh, I got mine out too. Nice. This is oh, an eater right here. Ooh, doubled up. Oh, the one K. Dude, there's nothing not fun about it. Come on, look at this. Nice. I got one too. Oh. Oh. Right. That's fine. I got the drop anyway. Let me get the net out for that guy. Yeah, they can be annoying. Hell yeah, brother. This is gonna be the perfect eater size barracuda too. Right around that six, seven pound range. Real beautiful fish and highly underrated as, as a game fish and a sport fish. People talk so much smack about them and they're not excited to catch them, but if it's a rough day offshore, come in the intercoastal, get on these guys. There's plenty of them. Just pitch docks with some live baits and look at those teeth. It's kind of nerve wracking grabbing these fish because look at those teeth that can mess you up. He got me real good. Oh, he did. Just one long finger. And I'll show you guys something really cool about this fish. Every single barracuda um, has one tooth on the bottom right there that fits perfectly in the top of his mouth. There's a little indentation. So when it closes, it closes perfectly. I always thought that was really neat about them. And they all have a different little bit of uh, spotting on them. Some of them have a lot of spots, some don't have a lot at all. It's all around good fish. One thing I will say, the reason people don't like these and call them a trash fish, they smell really bad when you catch them. But when you clean them, that smell goes away. We're gonna slow troll those big blue runners and Omico jacks that we caught earlier. You put your leading hook right there in the nose. You put your treble hook right here in the body. Just like that. This way, it's gonna track straight. Look at the rod. Yeah. Oh, my, hold on, I think it's getting eaten actually. Something, it's slack, isn't it? I have them, I think. Oh yeah, we got them. All right. Yeah, we do. He was just being super lazy. Oh yeah, baby. Okay, I want you to see the size of this cuda compared to the bait we put out. Dude, they can 
They can do some damage, can't they? Yeah. That Blue Runner was huge. Yeah, the, the Blue Runner was half the size of the Cuda. Uh-huh. This Cuda is about the same size as the one I caught on the little spinner. Yep. Incredible. Well, there's our second dinner. Oh, yeah. Welcome home, buddy. You're gonna be, oh! oh. <laughs> You're gonna yeah, be in Vic's kitchen soon. That Blue Runner was like this big. He was probably a pound. That Barracuda's probably six. He just ate a sixth of his body weight, just like that. <laughs> you know what a good friend does after a long day of fishing? I said, Johnny, you take me out, I will wash the boat, so. Today's video is actually sponsored by Undoes It. It looks like the deck is pretty dirty, especially, well, actually surprisingly after a day of inshore fishing, so let's see if we can make it spotless for Johnny. So Undoes It is a company that introduces products used by professionals to every home, auto, RV, and boat owner to get the job done right the first time, saving more time for what matters. The boat and RV wash has an ultra concentrated formula, quickly clears away hard to remove grime, dirt, grease, and oils. Won't strip your waxer polish and you can use it on a lot of different materials fiberglass gel coat plastic metal glass wood painted surfaces natural and synthetic rubber canvas vinyl and much more another added bonus is all undoes it products are biodegradable phosphate free chlorine free ammonia free and hydrocarbon free undoes it's boat and rv wash works great smells good and i personally love that it makes cleaning the boat easy and enjoyable victor is a really good friend i mean he's pretty much washed my whole boat which is filthy because i bring a million people on my boat every couple weeks I'll exchange the 30 minute boat wash for a six hour fishing excursion any day of the week. If you guys are interested in the boat and RV wash or any other Undoes It products, I'm gonna have them linked below. I'm also gonna have their website linked on the screen right here for you guys to check out. So we're gonna go flay up the Barracudas. I'm excited to show you guys what that meat looks like, then we're gonna cook them up. So a lot of you guys at home are probably thinking to yourselves, Vic, aren't you afraid of Cigaterra poisoning? I know barracudas get a bad rap, and that is because big predatory fish like barracudas, far larger than this size, can contain a disease known as cigatera. When you ingest fish that have cigatera. In the States, highly unlikely you're going to get it, and it's also highly unlikely you're going to get it from a smaller fish like this. You got to think big snapper, big grouper, big barracudas, because it's something that a fish will get through biomagnification. The more fish it eats, the bigger the fish is, the more likelihood it's going to have cigatera. So we're going to fillet this guy up and I'm going to show you exactly what the meat is about. And another thing to note is I've been over to the Bahamas probably like, I don't know, six times in my life now. And every time you guys, or every time I'm at a dock or a fillet table there, the Bahamians love barracuda. You know, Westerners put their noses up to it. They say it smells, they say it's trashy, they think it's disease, but it's far from the truth. It's a delicious fish and Bahamians love it. It's a huge staple in their diet. In the Bahamas, you're far more likely to get cigatera in the Bahamas than you are the States as well. I mean, look at this. As I flay it, it's not even bloody. Gorgeous looking meat. Look at that. I know a lot of you guys at home right now are probably shocked. That is what Barracuda looks like. The outside of the fish does kind of have its own very unique off-putting smell, but the flesh, the inside of the fish, beautiful. So another thing I wanted to tell you guys is last night, I'm very happy to announce, Brookie and I booked our flights to Alaska for August. So I'm very excited to share those videos with you guys. And we're also going to be going to San Diego, California to explore that fishery kind of in the middle of July, really trying to branch out the content and just keep it, you know, fresh and exciting for you guys. There's the other half of our Barracuda. Look at this. White, firm, not fishy, not smelly. You guys will also see they don't have a very big bloodline as well. Look at this. Not a big bloodline. Okay, so for tonight's dinner, we're gonna make a little pan 
seared barracuda, and then some roasted veggies. I got some cut up parsnips, some carrots with the skins off. It's gonna be very delicious. We're gonna roast these in the oven. So first thing I'm gonna do is just coat them in a little bit of olive oil. If it doesn't have garlic in it, I'm probably not interested. Gotta do garlic powder. You can't go wrong with some salt. A little SPG, that's all you need. Salt, pepper, garlic powder. The essentials in the kitchen. Some fresh pepper. Roll this around, make sure that everything's coated. You want that olive oil all over those veggies. This is like a healthy version of french fries. Growing up, being Slovakian, I ate a lot of root vegetables. Turnips, parsnips, celery root, carrots. Um, big part of Slovakian culture. And it's a great way if you guys are looking for low calorie options, it's delicious, especially roasted in the oven. Asparagus don't take as long to cook, so I'm gonna put these guys in first, 425. And I also already have some purple potatoes roasting in there as well. I wanna make everybody a believer in the barracuda. One way I'm gonna do that is look at this. This is the barracuda all portioned up. This is freshly caught mangrove snapper, actually given to me by Adam Malusi of Move and Weight. That's mangrove snapper, a highly sought after, pretty expensive fish. This is barracuda. Now, if you went to the average person on the street, most people associate a white fish um, with being, you know, good, good quality. Let's look at the bloodline. There's the barracuda bloodline. There's the snapper bloodline, very similar. This one's actually much darker. So don't knock it till you try it. I know they stink when you first catch them, but try eating them. They are delicious. So another thing real simple, once again, just salt, pepper, garlic powder is the only way we're seasoning this barracuda. Ever since James came into this kitchen and really showed me how to get that nice high heat um, pan sear, that's all I've wanted to do with fish. Very repetitive, but once again, olive oil, salt, pepper, garlic powder going to go on the asparagus as well. You don't need much. You really let the vegetable, you know, speak for itself. Asparagus has a ton of flavor, so do parsnips, carrots, and especially when you roast them, they get that sweetness about them. Long time ago for a catch and cook, Yames made a romesco sauce at the house. So I'm gonna try to recreate it a little bit. You take some tomatoes and you basically get rid of the guts, the, uh, the real soft, watery part. I like to eat them, so I save them for the fridge as a snack. And then you have ingredients like pine nuts, some recipes have pine nuts, some have almonds, but you want some kind of nutty flavor, so we're gonna do a little bit of pine nut, a little bit of almond, some bread. Bread is gonna give it a good body, as well as a real good flavor. So I'm gonna blend, or at least attempt to blend our dry ingredients first. I didn't have time to roast tomatoes or peppers, but you guys have seen me roast peppers on the channel before. You can get these at a grocery store, pretty common. You find them in a little glass jar like this. We're gonna go in with the roasted peppers and roasted peppers have a real sweet, kind of fiery flavor to them. You, see, you can see those, uh, that charred skin still in there. It's just a real good flavor. So roasted pepper, I'm gonna start off with one garlic clove. Fresh garlic is very strong. So less is more in the beginning. And then I'm gonna to start to add our tomato. Olive oil. And then for some acidity, just some white wine vinegar. Just a splash at first. Nutty. Tangy, roasted red pepper, it's good. You guys are gonna, this is good. By the way, we got Johnny with What's us. On, guys? As well as his lovely girlfriend, Laura, which you guys have seen on the channel before. This is good stuff. So I'm happy with it, but I think we can get away with one more garlic clove. 
but like I said, you don't wanna to go too crazy with it. It definitely needs a little bit more acid. Could use a little bit more vinegar. All right, high heat sear, Brooke's favorite part, I smoke out the house. The majority of the time, cooked on that side, flip. You finish them off with a little butter. And then that bottom will cook in that butter. Everybody's gonna get a little bit of romesco. <laughs> Roasted parsnip and carrot. Okay, then we got our Roasted asparagus as well. The bear coot is actually super um, flaky. Flaky. Yeah. See what happens to your scallions when you put them in water like that? They get all cute. Yeah, they get all cute. Just like you. <laughs> so here we got our pan seared barracuda. You got roasted carrot and parsnips. There's the romesco, your roasted purple potato, and then a little scallion garnish. Look at the what? Look at the color of that thing. It's just pure white flaky meat. I mean, it doesn't surprise me. I've been eating barracuda since I was a kid and I've always enjoyed eating small barracudas. Yeah, I gave I'm you guys okay. some red huh? snapper. What do you think? You did. I haven't tried it yet. I'm about to right now. <laughs> it is absolutely delicious. Oh, very good. First time barracuda eater, huh? I have thrown a lot of these back and kind of turned a blind eye to ever eating them. I know they eat them a lot in the Bahamas and like South America, but um, hey, I think it's great. Tastes just like red snapper to me. <laughs> Laura? Definitely delicious. I, uh, I grew up eating saltwater fish, and this is actually my first saltwater fish I've eaten at Brook and Victor's, but it is absolutely delicious. I would never have guessed it was very good. We uh, generally feed her all the crazy critters that come out of Lake Ida. We yeah, fed her gar, clown knife fish, sun bass. sunshine bass, peacock bass, largemouth bass too, yeah. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. It's a real treat to have barracuda, isn't it? <laughs> yes. That was a master class in seafood, in the culinary arts by Victor right there. I mean, the display, the color, everything just all popped and went together. And like Laura said, you, I never would have guessed it was barracuda, you know, we've always thrown them back and now I'm regretting all the times we did. That was fantastic, Victor. Thanks. It's true. I've never had purple potatoes. Um, Everything was really fresh. The sauce was so flavorful. Um, parsnips, uh, never ate them that I know of. Um, it's just introducing us to a lot of new foods. Um, really appreciate you cooking for us. Everything was great. And the fish, the fish was awesome too. Thank you. Absolutely delicious as usual. I don't think there's really anything to worry about especially the smaller barracudas, but even around here. I'm actually curious if you guys know anything about Cigaterra or know someone, or if it's happened to you, comment down below, you know, maybe enlighten us, maybe you know more information or you know a story, or maybe you've even experienced it. So comment down below if you know something, and we, if you guys don't know this, we literally read all of the comments. We don't always have time to respond to all of them, but we do read them all, so. Comment your stories down below. This one was absolutely delicious. I would not throw it back if you didn't catch anything all day. Don't kill it just to kill it because you think it's a 
dumb fish or a trash fish. But if you're gonna eat it, I highly recommend it because it's delicious, so go ahead and eat it. Don't just kill it to kill it. Thank you everybody for the kind words and thank you guys at home for watching. Without you guys, like we always say, none of this would be possible. Being able to do this for a living is a dream come true, so thank you guys so much. And big thank you to Undoes It for sponsoring today's video. Until the next one, see ya.